I, I don't understand you, Raleigh. You said Lupo was defeated once. As Lupo, the professional major to scream. No one ever touched him in prize competition. His record stands in the sword clubs of the world as undefeated champion for all time. You mean to say he tried to retrace his step? That after his record as a professional, he accepted a gentleman's challenge? He was forced to, Admiral. At the university where he finished, he never touched a blade. He denied all but a perfunctory boyhood knowledge of the sport. But the manners of his time caught him out. A friend caught him out, Admiral. An American whom he met at the university and who became like a brother to him. He and a woman. The loveliest woman, perhaps, who ever lived. It was this American friend who painted that portrait. He was a young man who liked to paint a bit and had the money to indulge in that hobby. But at that time, he did not know that he was painting the great Lupo. There we are, Pete. A portrait of a swordsman. That was commissioned to do it for the Paris Circle to scream. It's very good. But I still don't understand why you insisted on painting him as a professional. Why not in white as an amateur? Because, Pete, for me, it had to suggest the great Lupo. I came to study in this country with two labor to see Lupo, but in my imagination, this thing suggests him. Thanks for closing, Pete. Let's talk. Go in. A bottle of champagne and two glasses. John, you're a strange and crazy fellow. You're rich, so you paint, which is a poor man's living. You're an American, so you spend all your spare time in the salle d'armes of Europe to become an expert with the saber. Why? I rather like the feeling of ancient feudal power the saber gives me. My father manufactured patent stoves in Texas. Where one is born doesn't matter. Friendship's roots are laid in past centuries. They're eternal. Look how you pour wine, as if you were a velvet or coated borgia, and I suspected poison. <laughs> and we must have hunted together in Caesar's Britain in the slack times of combat, 19 centuries ago, John. For our blood pulses to the same rhythm. Success to the portrait. And to a magnificent host, the 21st Count della Torre de Silvaggio, posing as a professional fencing master. Success, of course. But your real fame will hang in the academy someday. For Eliana will be your fame. There you've painted living beauty. Eliana! I heard no bell. Where's Borean? I came down the olive terraces to the garden. Is it that late? The Angelus. I have to go. Oh, no, no, Pete. Don't go. Amuse Eliana while I change. Bear without me for a moment, darling. Pete, you must reconsider your journey. You must remain another month for our wedding. Uh, that's impossible, John. Quite impossible. My plans are made. We'll change them, won't we? See you in a minute. You knew I was still here. Yes. I will not hurt him. But yourself and me. To save his pride, you destroy both of us. You're engaged to him, Eliana. I'm not yet his wife. If I were, I would be a despicable person. But I'm not. So you will not treat me as if I were. One cannot buy life at too great a cost to someone else. If one tries to, life becomes unlivable. So instead, you choose to run away from life. I must. There is no other course. I thought I could banish you from my life, if not my thoughts. 
but I cannot because you are my life. If you ever leave me again, I shall follow you, even if you never look back. What shall we do? What can we do? I cannot marry him. You must tell him. How can I tell him that his best friend has taken his love from him? It will kill him. Soul will die inside. I know him and his pride. Then must we all die, Pietro? I don't know, but this I do know. We cannot kill him, for he's guiltless. The real strength of a man sometimes lies in a woman's hand. I shall tell him. No. I will not hide behind you. We must not forevermore be broken people. We cannot pay that cruel penalty for such a gentle crime. Count de la Torre da Salvaggio, sir. Pete, so early. Where's the funeral? In my heart, John. Have you been drinking? The French say the blade of the dueling sword is triangular to indicate the eternal conflict of two men and one woman. What's happened? Have you trespassed in someone else's garden? Have you been called out, challenged? You have been called out. The code is still open here, and you're a lumber. You can use the blade well enough? Tell me, I should like the second for you, of course. I'm in love with Ileana, and Ileana with me. You? No. You must not think less of her, John, or of me. When we met, I didn't know that she was engaged to marry you as an excuse I will not use. It was just destined and could not be altered. You mean this, don't you? Get out of here. Colonel McTavish, late of the 42nd, appointed to act for Mr. John Rolish. Bartolomeo Farnese, friend of the Count de la Torre di Salvaggio, empowered to act for him. I'm instructed to inform you then that under the coach at the Villard, Mr. Rolish assumes the injury to be the challenge. Are you in agreement? The Count has so instructed me. He is at Mr. Rolish's uh, disposal. Uh, very well. The client stipulates that the weapons will be sabers and the cartel written for the protection of the witnesses if either or both of them men should be killed. 